Good morning. Lovely to see you here. Um, I don't know what it's like where you are, but it's raining. It sounds lovely this morning. Uh, rained most of the night. Just going to start music. There we go. Uh, let's go back to here. There we go. So we have something quiet going on in the background. So this morning we're going to do a a flow for the hips. Yin yoga always works on the hips and the low back, um, but when we do get a flow uh, that works, that concentrates just on the hips, then we do make sure we get all the rotations. So if you're sitting like I am, you're in outer rotation. There's inner rotation as well when you turn your hip inside like that. We have adduction when we open and pull on the inside line of the hip joints. If we stack the knees, then we're in abduction where we're pulling on the outside part of the hips. There's two more because there's a total of six. <clears throat> so we've had outer, inner, abduction, adduction, and then there's compression in the front of the hips. So when you bend and then of course extension in the front of the hips um, when you bend the other way. Okay, so all um, six ranges of motions we'll explore this morning. As always, listen to your body something doesn't feel right, pay attention to modifications. Have a little quilt or blanket to sit your sit bones on if you like, if you have tight hamstrings or um, if you are, um, have any sciatica issues. So getting yourself into a comfortable cross-legged seat, you can sit one foot in front of the other, hands in your lap or on your thighs, palms up or down. If you'd like to lie back for the meditation, then feel free to do so. You might like to have your legs bent with the inner knees resting together. That's a little easier on the low back. Feel free to straighten them out if you like or not at all. And if you're lying back, your hands can be on by your sides, palms up or down or on your belly or one hand on your belly and one hand on your heart. Shrug your shoulders up to your ears. Now let them slide down your back, away from your ears, and tuck your chin in slightly, lengthening the back of the neck, letting your eyes fall softly shut, settling into this room, onto your mat. Let go of your morning thus far. Let go of today, whatever's on the agenda. Let go of the anxieties and worries just for this next hour. Everything will be waiting for you once you step off your mat. So set aside this one hour for you, body, mind, and spirit. Do a body scan next. Take note if there are any areas on any level, physical or mental, spiritual or emotional areas, issues that may arise when we stop to pause and listen. And it's not that you'll dwell on whatever does arise, but you acknowledge it. Create a little space for it. And when we check in again at the end of this hour, you may find that things have subtly shifted in sensation or perspective. And then become aware of your breath next. Don't change anything, just notice it. Whereabouts in your chest cavity are you breathing? How fast are you breathing? Are you breathing through your nose or your mouth or a bit of both? So begin to breathe in and back out again through your nose. Pull that air in past the rings of your nostrils. Trace its path as it flows up your nose, down your throat, into your lungs. And then back out that same pathway. Feel the swirl past the rings of the nostrils as the breath exits the body. Notice the difference in temperature there, how the air is cooler when it first swirls in. And it's warmer when it swirls back out. Notice how your breath is slowing down, deepening. So start evening out your inhales and exhales. 
put a count to two or three, four, as you pull the air in and then that same steady count as you send it back out. And if you find the numbers don't really fit for you, use the little mantra. I am breathing in, I am breathing out, matching that phrase to your inhales and your exhales. Check that your shoulders are relaxed. It's an easy, lovely, full breath. On another inhale, still counting or using that mantra, pay attention to how your ribs move. Notice how they expand in four directions, just like a pearly white bird cage excuse me, birdcage, or the old-fashioned hoop skirts. Watch them contract as you exhale. Go deeper into your body now, beneath your ribs. Look at your lungs, still counting. See how they expand in four directions as well. Fronts, backs, feel them poof out. If you're lying back, you'll feel them press into your mat. Inner outer sides of your lungs thickening as they take in air. Know that they turn a glowing rosy pink as they expand and then watch those lungs contract and know that they turn slightly blue as you exhale. Send those lungs some gratitude for being healthy. All the work that they do for you all day, all night. This is your yogic breath. It's the main one that we use in yin yoga. And it helps anchor your body, in, your mind inside your body. It gives your mind a place to rest, a place to focus. And the other reason for much emphasis on the breath is it'll let you know if you're working too hard. If you're in too far, then the breath may become ragged and then you know you need to back off, modify so that you can always come back to this most important part of any style of yoga. And yin is no exception. Your breath, the link between your mind and your body. And this morning, just before we start the flow, set an intention. In yoga, we practice with attention always but an intention as well. What brought you here to your mat this morning? What purpose? Finding a little calm, peace, stretching out a little bit, feeling a little more limber. Maybe you're thinking of someone and you want to dedicate your practice this morning to that person or that idea or that feeling. And then if you are lying back, make your way to one side, pause there for a moment. Everyone can open their eyes, blink them open and closed a few times. And if you're seated, you want to lift your knees, maybe straighten them up, give them a little bounce, rock. Once you're ready from your back, push into your mat with one of your hands and help yourself up and onto a seated position. We are going to start with butterfly, a lot of the poses do. And this one can be an aggravator of sciatica, so you might want to have a little um, quilt or a towel rolled up just to sit your sit bones just on the edge of them. So you feel that slight elevation, but also a slight tilt because you're just on the edge of it. Bring your foot soles together. Let the knees flare open. And remember if this bothers a hip or a knee, use a block, use a cushion, another quilt, whatever, just to support under your thighs. Alternately, you can use the block inside. And then when we lean forward, you can rest on it. So take an inhale now. And then on the exhale, let yourself start to round forward. If that's okay for your back, allow that lower back just to round. And you'll find that you stop at a certain place. And then just stay there. Maybe you set your hands on the block and rest your forehead on it. Maybe it's your elbows that go on the block and you rest your head in your hands. If there's disc issues in the low back that you shouldn't round, then don't. Keep your tummy pulled in and just lean with a flat back from the hips. And same thing, you'll find a spot where you just kind of stop and that's your edge. And you wanna stay there. So 
So the first task for our principal is finding that edge, leaning forward, and you could probably go deeper, but that would require pulling using some muscles, and we don't pull in yin. We just relax, surrender. Yin is the opposite of yang, right? So yang is active and working and bright and energetic, and yin tends to be soft and quiet, the dark side of things. Maybe you have the lights dim in your room. I would be here too, except for being on camera. And it's a surrendering practice. So we find that edge, place where it's a little bit uncomfortable. And then we find stillness. That's the second tattva. Let your head drop if it's okay for the back of your neck. Relax your arms, relax your legs. Feel the tugging that's going on, especially this first pose of the morning. Maybe your low back, your hip joints in this outer rotation. Maybe you notice the pressure of the ankles, on the ankles, into your mat. So there's a physical stillness, not backing away from that edge. But there's also this inner stillness of noticing, becoming aware, paying attention to the sensation, physical as well as on other levels, mental, emotional. When you notice that maybe that edge dissipates and you can relax a little further forward, let gravity pull you maybe. Maybe you move your block to a lower position. Steady breathing, always breathing in through the nose, back out through the nose. On the exhale, think, let go. So breathe in. Slow down, breathe out, let go. We hold these positions for minutes in yin. And it's because we're trying to soften our muscles, we can save the yang style of exercise and fitness for, for our muscles. In yin, we're actually working with fascia. So we're using a lot of the principles that they use in myofascial release and deep tissue massage. The steady pressure, steady tugging, just at that manageable discomfort. If you can't seem to get your breath to slow down and relax and go back to how you were in meditation, then you know you're in too deep. So back off a little bit modify something a little bit so that you can find that comfortable discomfort. And the third principle is this hold for time, for minutes. Because that's the best way that studies have found to get at these connective tissues. We don't want to do a bunch of reps to try to lengthen our hamstrings because we'll injure ourselves. Think of that credit card analogy. <clears throat> and if you put a slight pressure on it, it'll bend. And then when you let go, it'll go back to its regular shape. If you force that credit card into a bent shape, you'll permanently distort it. You could even break it. And because fascia has so much collagen in it, that can happen, or with us, it's plastic in nature, can happen that way with us too. On your next inhale, you're going to slowly uncurl your way back up. Exhale when you get all the way up. Lean back on your hands. It should feel lovely to release your hips and your low back that way. Take your time. Enjoy that ah, flow of warmth and heat and coolness through various areas. When you're ready, set your foot soles down about the width of your mat. 
and just do some nice windshield wipers back and forth. Notice the rotation in the hips now. Oh, good to see some more people. Lovely. Straighten out your legs, push through the heels. And then we're going to swivel sideways on our mat for dragonfly. So sitting again, if you, especially if you have um, sciatica issues or tight hamstrings. In yin, you don't have to have your legs straight like this. You can put a slight bend in them. You can support under the knee if you like. Um, with whatever you've got handy so that it takes some of the pressure off the back of the knee. You can, if you're, you've got quite tight hamstrings, you find, then set your heels, your feet down like this and have quite the bend in your legs. So that's totally fine. We're going to take an inhale and we are just straight going, going straight down the center. So inhale and then use a block to exhale, leaning forward. Remember this one again, don't pull, just lean. Allow your back to round if it's okay. If it's not for the low back, if there's disc issues, keep that tummy pulled in, keep it flat to protect, protect your low back and lean from the hips. Rest on a block on your elbows. Same thing, if you wanna rest your head in your hands or maybe now your, head, your neck feels a little bit more warmed up, you can let your head dangle and then you get a nice pull on the back of the cervical spine. That's always nice as well. But if it's too much for your neck, then don't do that. And if you're going to rest your head on a cushion or on a block, remember there's three sides to the block. So maybe you start on the taller side and you can keep your hands there for support. But once you turn it a little bit lower, sometimes it's nice to move those arms apart towards the feet and then relax that way. And that feels nice across the shoulders. And if it's too much on the forehead, feel free to turn your head to one side. Maybe take your glasses off. I'll give you the halfway mark so that you can turn your head to the other side. Steady breathing in and out. So this one is a nice one for the hamstrings as you're feeling. The first one, butterfly, was great for that outer rotation of the hip joint and nice for the inner and outer lines of the legs as well. But now we're in dragonfly and this one is lovely for abduction, pulling into the groin. You don't want to overdo it and again just surrender to gravity. Don't pull yourself forward, arms are just completely relaxed no effort. The only effort is keeping your mind inside your body. Breathe in, slow down, breathe out, let go. Sometimes if you're having trouble with quads maybe engaging that they just can't seem to let go, send your breath there. You might think, um, Sandra, the last time I checked, my lungs were in my chest, not my quads. But if you think about breathing there, send your breath there energetically with your mind. And it's kind of magical in that that can help to relax that area. If your head's on one side, turn it to the other now. And sometimes another kind of breath that you might like to use is that ocean breath. It's called ujjayi breath. And it's that H-A sound that you make in the back of your throat as if you were fogging up your glasses to clean them or a mirror. But we do it with our lips together. So if you're not familiar with it, try it a couple of times with your lips apart. And you can hear your voice, your breath. When you pull your breath in, you can even say A-H, pulling it across that glottis muscle. 
and then put your lips together and send that AH and HA sound through your nose. The sound of it, especially when a room full of people are doing it, is like the ocean. It's as if you have a conch shell up to your ear and you hear that sound. And it helps get, kick in your parasympathetic nervous system for these longer holds. This one is another five minute, just like the beginning. And sometimes we're wanting to leave a pose, we're not happy there, but listening to that comforting breath can help calm us. On your next inhale, slowly uncurl back up. Exhale when you get all the way up. <clears throat> Once again, lean back on your hands and move your legs. Just enjoy that release through the hip joints, inner legs back. Take your time when you're ready. Once more, set your feet down about the width of your mat when it's the skinny way and do some windshield wipers again. Notice how your hips, the femurs, move inside the pelvic socket. Think about the inner knee and the outer knee of the opposite leg going toward your mat. And then straighten those legs, give them a nice bounce, rock from the top of the hips, and swivel around one more time. We'll do one more forward bend. So we've done outer rotation, we've done abduction, now we're going to compress in the front of our hips. So this one's called caterpillar. <clears throat> Simple forward bend, once again, nice to have that little elevation, but it's not necessary. If you find that you don't have um, tight hamstrings and you don't have any sciatica issues, then not to worry. <clears throat> Take an inhale. And then on the exhale, lean forward. This one's just going to be three minutes. And you can slip your hands beneath the back of your knees if you need to have that little bit of break on the back of your legs. Roll up a little blanket or a quilt. Set that behind your, your knees if you like. So you don't have to have your legs straight again. Again, watch your back. If you're okay, let it round. But if you need um, that protection in the low back, then keep it flat. Tummy's pulled in and just lean the flat back like so. Let your head drop or not. A block can be really handy here too. If you're not using it beneath the back of your knees, set it on your shins. And then maybe, and remember there's different sides, so maybe you could just rest your forehead on it and completely relax. It's almost like you're floating, but not too comfortable of a floating. It's that comfortable discomfort. So notice the tug. This one's great for the entire back body, right from your heels, up the backs of your legs, or maybe it's a downward pull that you're feeling. From the base of your skull, you can feel this lengthening tug all the way down your spine as well. But it's lovely for compression in the front of the hip joint, lovely for tugging in the back of the hip joint but easy does it. Don't pull. Make sure your arms are relaxed, elbows loose, shoulders are relaxed. Let your head go if it's not on a block or maybe now that it's on, a, maybe it's on a block and now you think, well, I'll just let it dangle now. The weight of your head, gravity will work on that too as you surrender the pull. Breathe in, breathe out. As you know, yin works with meridians as well from acupressure and acupuncture theories of the Taoists, Chinese medicine. This one is a lovely one for the urinary bladder meridian line, the entire back body. That line runs down either side of your spine and the back of each leg. Sometimes these forward bends, for that reason, can stir up some feelings of anxiety or fear. 
just because we may be touching on trigger points or maybe there's a little blockage that we don't even realize and this can help to remove that. Come back to your breath, always your breath, most important part. And on your next inhale now, slowly uncurl back upright. Let's do your sitting in that L shape. Close your eyes. Notice that delicious ah feeling as the blood rushes back into those areas. You actually are giving yourself a deep tissue massage in yin as well because of that principle of compression and then or constriction and then release. And then we're going to come um, into uh, just two poses for one side and then we'll do them on the other side. So the first one is shoelace. Take your right leg. And again, this one, um, remember if there's arthritis or knee injuries or um, not good health and the knee doesn't want to bend, um, you can have it, as, as whatever you can, swing it across to. It doesn't have to be bent this much. As long as you're feeling it, you're doing it. So you want to feel some tugging, not pain in the knee. This is another one too. You can do it um, similarly on your back. Stack your right knee on top and then bring the knees in if you like. You can use your hands for extra weight as well. But most people can do it with some modification on um, seated. Uh, sit your hips on the edge of something too. Remember this is another forward um, moving uh, pose so it can aggravate the hips. So knees are stacked. Lift the thigh flesh, lift your belly flesh out of the way, get that knee on top of the knee. If it won't go there, put something between the knees so that they, it can rest on. Put a block maybe beneath the thigh, even for support. If you're feeling fine there, your knees are together, lean back and bring the other one in. Um, you'll sit this way and then you can see better. So if that causes your knee to pop up, then put something, as I mentioned, in between the knees again. So knee, feet are out to the, the um, by the hips, or if you're finding that shoelace is quite comfy and your, your knees are stacked like this, then move your feet a little bit away from the hips. We're gonna inhale, and then we're gonna set our hands on the floor in front of the stacked knees, or if your bottom leg is straight, on either side of that bottom leg. Push back a little bit into, um, into the, your mat, so that that sends the weight back in your hips and you'll notice right away, oh yeah, that takes the, the extra pressure off the knees. We don't want any pain here on our knees, so be very mindful and kind to your knees. You wouldn't make somebody else sit in a pose that's painful, so don't do it to yourself. As you breathe and lean forward, this one is quite intense, you're probably finding that, oh, I can't seem to lean as far forward as I did in that one we just did with the legs straight. Well, think about what you're doing right now to your legs, your hips, your knees, your ankle. We're in quite a unusual position. We don't tend to sit like this as adults. We cross our knees, but we're usually sitting in a chair, so we don't have the outer rotation of our hip joint that we have right now. So easy does it. This is adduction as well. So you might be feeling there's like a squish feeling in the groin. And then there's a pull on the outer points of our hips. If your leg is straight, your, your left leg, and you're finding that there's a lot of pressure on the back of the knee because of the right leg's weight, slip your hands beneath the back of that knee. Slip a rolled up towel or a, a quilt beneath it too. You want a little bit of pressure there. You're actually getting another hamstring stretch if you've got your um, bottom leg straight. Shoelace is one of the best poses for us Westerners because of how deep it works into the hip sockets and because we don't live on the floor. So we don't tend to do very much of this outer rotation of the hip joint. And hence the hip replacements are off the chart in the Western world as compared to the Eastern world where they live on the floor, they eat on the floor, sit on the floor, go to each other's houses and sit on the floor, sit around a low coffee table in Japan. So 
So remember, a little bit of homework from in between classes is watch TV sitting on the floor. Alternate which leg is in front or which leg is on top if you're going to sit in shoelace or cross-legged. Almost done. A few more breaths here. On your next inhale, slowly bring yourself back upright. If you're on your back, make your way to one side and pause before you join us. Help that top leg off, set it down. Bring the bottom leg off, set it down. You have options here. Lean back first just to release and enjoy that lovely ah feeling. You can straighten and bounce and rock, or you can do windshield wipers. Whatever helps to release that compression. And then we'll swing around onto all fours. <clears throat> have a block handy for this next one. This is called dragon poses and they another one that works very deeply into the hips. So where your right hand is, pick up your right foot and put it there. Help it forward if you need to. Stack your joints so make sure your knee is over your ankle like this. And then see if you can get your right hand on the outside of that foot. Get that kneecap kind of into the armpit area that helps for length, a little bit more length on this arm. Um, put a block maybe there if you need to. Use two blocks because it's not got anything to do with where your arms are. They're just there to support you so that you can relax into your legs more. Move this out of the way. Tuck your, if you're okay here, um, or you've, you've got yourself set up, now tuck your left toes under and move that left leg back. If you're finding your mat is too thin and you can feel the pressure on that left knee, then put something under that kneecap like so, so that it's a little more padded. Set the top of the foot down, look back, make sure that leg is nice and straight behind you. And then let's see if we can be on fingertips for a little bit here and your finger joints might go, oh, and complain a little bit. So easy does it, just maybe you only take two or three breaths here, but it's wonderful to put a little pressure into them, just to work them a little bit, but easy does it. Once you've had enough, then go back to either flat hands on your mat or on your block, or you can alternate and go to fists as well. Um, just know that when you alternate your hand position, your leg muscles will in engage. So make sure you relax them. So now look on the floor in front of you. Tendency is to drop your head. We've, got, we've done a lot of dangling. We're gonna keep our spine in a nice line. So if you look about a meter, three feet in front of you, now close your eyes. Check in with those legs, they're probably still kind of engaged. So relax a little bit and notice right away how that increases the pull immediately. Steady breathing in and out. Now inhale, bring your right arm inside so you're resting on both hands like this. You can, if you like, stay there, or you can bring the block, and then you can rest your forearms on it to give your wrists a little bit of a break. So that's an option too. Some of you might be able to go right down onto your mat with your forearms. Now we're gonna move our legs, so make sure you're resting on your forearms somehow um, on something. Flap that right leg up and down like a dragon wing, going to the side edge of your foot three or four times, and then on about the third or the fourth flap, let it stay open. This is called winged dragon for obvious reasons and you might find that you're suddenly feeling a little bit warmer now in dragon pose. They tend to heat us up. You can stack your fists and rest your forehead here if you like, if you're on your mat. And if you aren't then, and if you're finding that um, it's getting a little bit hard on your wrists, remember, um, bring that block in so that you can turn it to a higher side so that you can uh, give your wrists a little bit of a break. You're just about done. Relax those legs. Use your ocean breath. Inhale now. Set that foot down. Come all the way up onto your hands. 
tuck your back toes under so that you can push into your hands and push your hips up and back. Oh, that's a good one to say. Bernie says, oh my God, with the O, after the O. Rock up onto the heel, straighten under. The, uh, give a nice pull for that hamstring there, should feel lovely. And then when you're ready, heel toe, pull your foot back, lift it and set it down on its knee. <clears throat> Stay still on all fours so you can totally enjoy that delicious release of warmth, coolness, buzzing kind of through your hips. Notice each hip feels a little different too. We'll even them out. Let's do a couple cat cows. So arch your back, drop your belly, look up, spread the sit bones. Go the other way again, tucking the tailbone under, pushing into those arms. Match one breath to one movement. Once you've done three or four, end with a flat back and then come to a seated position. <clears throat> and we'll do shoelace and dragon on the other side. So straightening out your legs. This time we'll take our left leg in, bend it, swing it across. See if you can stack your knee on top of the knee, just like before. Maybe this side goes and you don't need to lie on your back. Maybe this is the knee that's got arthritis or waiting, um, just had a knee replacement, hip issues, whatever. So remember you can support between the knees, however you need to. <clears throat> Something soft under the thigh, whatever, okay? So set that up. If your knees are together, lean back, swing in the bottom leg. Same thing, if the knees pop apart a little bit for that, then put something in between them. Remember too, this is another one where you lift the belly flesh and, and the thigh flesh so that you can get um, everything nicely stacked. Take an inhale, and then on the exhale, lean forward. Plant your hands on the either side of your straight leg if the bottom leg is straight. Push back. If you've got your knees, um, your both legs bent like mine, then your hands are in front of your knees. And just give that slight pressure. It's not a really hard pushing back, but you'll notice right away that it takes pressure off the knees. So that's what we want. We want heavy in the hips, light on the knees. No knee pain at all. Go onto your back if you're feeling any kind of twinges or don't lean so far forward. Blocks can be great here too. You can set it on its end and rest your head again if you like. Let your arms go out to the side maybe or in front of you in prayer. Maybe you just let your head dangle. Maybe the block is where you rest your forearms. Maybe rest your head on it or let your head dangle. So lots of options here with a block. And even if your arms are resting, you can still keep a slight pressure in them to keep that weight into the hips. Remember, feed your hands beneath the back of your knee if your bottom leg is straight because it tends to be quite a lot of weight and pressure on the back of the knee. So easy does it there. Steady breathing in through your nose, back out through your nose. If it bothers your neck to let your head dangle, then just keep it in line with your spine if you're not using a block or rest it on a block. The more we can relax into our legs, the more we feel that deep tugging and it goes deeper. We've got that outer strong pull on the hip joint and down the outsides of the legs. This is the gallbladder meridian line. Even if you have had your gallbladder removed, you still have gallbladder energy lines in your body. Gallbladder energy works with liver energy, liver chi. And the pressure you're feeling in the groin and on the inside line of your legs, that's the pathway of the liver meridian. Sometimes we feel a little bit irritated in these poses, as in annoyed, angry, in this shoelace pose and that's probably due to hitting some of the trigger points along that liver meridian line. Just remember, come back to your breath, your intention for being here. Try not to get involved with the emotions or feelings that 
arise, acknowledge them. But as you exhale, think of them releasing. On your next inhale, bring yourself all the way back up. Exhale, help that top leg off, set it down. Bring the bottom leg out, set it down. If you're on your back, you're making your way to your side, pausing there. Remember the options, straighten, lean back if you like, take your time just to enjoy that delicious spearmint feeling and then maybe bounce, rock, or if it's windshield wipers that you find help to release that. And then we'll swing around, coming on to all fours. Our favorite dragon poses on this side. <clears throat> Again, remember, maybe have a little bit of a padding here for under the knees. So where your left hand is this time, we're going to put our left foot there. Help it forward if you need to. Remember to stack your joints. So you've got your ankle nicely under that knee, nice support there. Use a block if need be under that left arm to give your arm a little more length. Tuck your right toes under and creep that right leg back, back until you just feel that kind of, oh my God, feels like I'm gonna do splits feeling. Get that block building here a little bit further back. Set the top of the foot down, look back, make sure your leg is nice and straight behind you. And then we'll look on the floor in front of us about a meter, three feet, just to keep our head in that nice, or spine in that nice alignment. We're not gonna drop our head. Remember, you can be on finger joints for a little bit here. Several breaths, good to strengthen them. Close your eyes and relax into your legs just a little bit. And you'll notice right away how that increases the sensation big time. So easy does it there. Remember your breath is your guide, so listen to it nice and steady. Use that ocean breath here, most definitely can help. Once you've had enough for your finger joints, remember you can switch positions, but relax your legs again because they tend to engage when we move our hands. You can be on fists or flat hands. Now, inhale, bring that left arm inside. So you're on your, your two hands, stay there. Maybe you lower down a little bit. Bring the block in if you like. <clears throat> Rest your forearms on that block. Or maybe you're down on your mat, okay? As long as it's not a struggle to get there. So flap your left leg up and down three or four times, just like a dragon wing. And on the third or fourth flap, let it stay rocked out to the side, rotated out. You're rocked over onto the side edge of your foot. And this is a little bit of a pressure on your ankle as well. So easy does it. But the majority of the sensation, the main sensation should be in that hip joint. Outer rotation, strong sensations through the outside point of the hip and the inner line, the groin there, and down the inner line of the leg. Use your ocean breath. If you like, you can stack your fists and rest your forehead. And sometimes when you do that, then the legs will relax even more. It's kind of magical. Almost done. On your next inhale, set that foot down, come back up onto your hands, tuck your back toes under, push your hips up and back, straighten out that front leg, put your left hand on the outside of it, rock up onto your heel like that. It's lovely for the back of the leg and the hamstring and it releases the hips so nicely. And then bring your leg back down, set it down, stay on all fours for a few breaths, just to fully enjoy that release. Know how much good you did for your hips right there with those dragons, intense as they are, they're fabulous. 
arch your back for a cat, tuck your tailbone, drop your head, drop your belly, lift your head, spread the sit bones for cow. Go through two or three more cat cows, match one breath to each movement. And then when you're done, end with a flat back. Come to a seated position, swinging your legs to one side, rock over the ankles, straighten those legs out. <clears throat> we are going into either half saddle or full saddle here. So half saddle, you want to start seated and lean to your right side and swing around this way. Um, Actually, no, it's the right leg forward. I'm sorry, so I will stay this way. So lean to your right side and pull in your left leg. See how that feels um, with your knee. Remember, if the knee doesn't seem to want to bend too far, there's lots of things you can do. First of all is sit on a block would be a good thing. And that doesn't put as much compression in your knee joint. It helps with the ankle as well. Um, so that's, that's important. Maybe you don't need to sit as high on a block, then sit on a rolled up quilt. If you're finding that that feels good, then bring in both knees. It's easier to get into it, usually I find, from this way and then sitting back. So you can do full saddle with your legs um, bent like this, inner rotation. This is how we get inner rotation and you're sitting between your heels. Again, if you can bend both legs, but it's a little bit too intense, sit on a block again, and so that takes pressure off your knees. You can also put a quilt behind your knees as well, and that helps keep the knee joints open. All right, I'll tell you at the halfway point when we're gonna switch legs. So if you've got your um, one leg straight, then you're gonna start to, or both legs um, bent, then you're gonna start to lean back like this. So you can see you want to keep the arch in your low back when you're leaning back. So don't collapse like this. Lift your heart. Support yourself on your hands if you like. This right away puts quite a strong pull through the quad from the outside point of the hip joint. Um, so there's lots going on here. So easy does it. If you are a person that, whether it's um, one leg straight, if you're doing the, the left leg bent, and you can get down to your elbows, um, then that's fine. Keep that arch, though, see, in your low back. Don't let that collapse. Keep that heart lifted. You can keep your head looking forward, or you can let it go back. If you're going to let it go back, you're going to leave it there the whole time. Never lift it up from this position. When we come out of it, you'll push into your hands and your elbows, and then your head will be just nicely in line, no effort in your neck, okay? If you're going down all the way, you find that you can. Make sure that your knees stay down. Don't let them lift up. And a block can be nice under those shoulder blades so that you can, that helps keep that lift and that arch in your low back and it feels fabulous. Arms by your sides, maybe out to the sides if you like. Some of you might find eventually it feels nice to have them over your head and get a lovely pull all through here. But either one, whatever gives you that comfortable discomfort. Steady breathing in and out. Almost forgot our thought for this morning. Yesterday I was clever, so I wanted to change the world. Today I am wise, so I am changing myself. And that's one of my favorite poets. Rumi. Now we're going to switch sides if you are doing one leg at a time. If you've got both legs bent, stay where you are. Use your core. Remember, if your head was back, you're going to pull in, push into your arms, your hands, and leave your head there. And then if you were doing um, the one leg, then straighten out that bent leg. That would be your left, pulling your right leg, lean over, and then work your way back down. Easy does it. You might find that, as is often the case, that second side, you really notice, oh, 
by what's in a little deeper at the end of the first side than this second side. And to me, that's one of the magical, many magical things of yin is this acknowledging of how the body does let go. As long as we're not forcing it, we're kind. And knees don't have to be together. They can be a little bit apart, a little bit more apart even. It's, it's up to you. There's, there's um, no big alignment issues with this one, other than the knees need to stay down. If they start to lift up, then you stay where you are. Don't go back any further. This is one that's hard on ankles as well. <clears throat> but again, how often do you sit like this as an adult? Never. So we haven't sat down, plopped down like this to play since we were little kids. And that's a magical thing to watch is little kids when they're playing, how from standing they just plop down into this saddle pose, no problem. But we can, as long as we're gentle, work to get back some of this limber feeling in our hip joints, especially with these strong inner and outer rotations that we're not used to. Relax your jaw. Relax your shoulders. Ride that breath in. few more breaths. Now on your next inhale, you're going to pull your core in, pull your bottom rib to the your um, pelvis, push into those elbows, leave your head back, bend your hands, bring yourself all the way back up, keep going onto all fours with both legs bent, it's quite natural, if you had the one leg bent, then you'll be crawling forward, setting that foot, uh, leg back down so you're on your knees, be still, pay attention. Notice that lovely, lovely warmth. So beneficial, flushing out toxins and nourishing areas. And then whatever you like here, some cat cows, or sometimes it's nice after the saddle pose to draw some circles on your mat with your hips like this, make big circles. Go a couple times one way and then a couple times the other way if you're going to do that. Or do the cat cows if you need to for your back. And then when you're ready, make your way down onto your backs for spinal twists. So once you're on your back, <clears throat> arms are going to come out to a T. We're going to cross our right knee on top of our left. Here you can either rest the side of the foot against the shin if you like, or the side of your lower leg, I guess, or you can hook um, the wrap all the way around, whatever you like. Here you might want to scoot your left hip under and let those knees drop slowly over to the left. If you find that there's quite a big gap between your knees and the floor, then let them rest on a block. And that might also help keep your um, right shoulder in contact with your mat. Turn your head if it's okay for your neck and look to the outstretched right hand. Breathing in, breathing out. Twists are helping to release tension in your spine. And if it bothers your neck to turn your head and look to your right hand, then don't do that. Keep your head flat, the back of your head on your mat. 
not flat, but in the center. If you are turning, think about your right ear, that it could come onto your mat. That'll bring the twist into your neck. Feel that open heart. Now inhale those legs back up to the center. Undo them. Plant your feet, push into them, lift your hips off your mat. That realigns your spine. And then set the hips down. Cross the left knee on top of the right. Crook the calf if you like, or not. Fake it, no worries. Nobody's looking, no yoga police. And then let those legs drop slowly over to the right. Turn your head if it's okay for your neck. Think about your left ear, that it could come onto your mat. Breathing in. Breathing out. So not only do twists help to release tension in your low back, but they also work on the nervous system. They help to restore that equilibrium between the parasympathetic and the sympathetic. We've had some pretty intense poses when we do hip flows. We work pretty deeply into those hip sockets and there's a lot of tightness in that largest joint in our body. So the nervous system gets a little bit of upheaval and twisting can help to restore that ah, balance. Still yogic breathing in through the nose and back out. Now inhale your legs back to the center. Undo them once more, plant your feet, push into those hips, lift or feet and lift your hips into the air. Set the hips down, bring the knees into your chest, wrap your arms around your shins, give yourself a hug, rock over that spine, massaging your back. Take your time here. When you're ready, you might want to slip back on if you're like me and you took your hoodie off. Slip it back on. Maybe grab a quilt to cover up with so you're nice and warm. Lie back down. Leave a little bit of space between your legs when you lie down. Arms are going to be by your sides. Palms up or down. Doesn't matter. Shoulders are relaxed. Tuck your chin in slightly to lengthen the back of the neck. Take in a deep breath. Let it go with a sigh. If you've got glasses on, you might want to take them off. Take in another deep breath. Let it go. Fill your body now with a warm, healing light of relaxation from your toes all the way to your scalp. You are warm, heavy, glowing with this light of relaxation. Float away to a happy place now. Or stay within, watching the energies. But whatever you choose, take rest now for the next couple of minutes. Let your breath be whatever it wants to be and let your body absorb the benefits of the practice in Shavasana. <sighs> 